Hello, Dr. Siddiqui. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Well, thank you. It's very nice to meet you. Thank you. Same here. Uh, you are a consultant in hematology, Mayo Clinic International, uh, Sheikh Shahboot Medical City in Abu Dhabi. Yes, absolutely. I have just arrived here in uh, January of 2021. Welcome to this part of the world. Thank you. Today, we're going to talk about thalassemia, which is an inherited blood disorder. Nine million women who are carriers of thalassemia get pregnant per year. And this means that we're going to have a 1.5 million pregnancies at risk of having a thalassemic baby. And the problem in the Middle East is much more serious because we have more related marriages and this significantly increases the burden of thalassemia. Today, you're going to tell us all about thalassemia and you will update us with the latest research findings on treatment. Shall we start? Absolutely. اللي بعد ما اشترك بالقناة ما تنسوا تعملوا سبسكرايب وتكبسوا الجرس ليوصلكم نوتيفيكيشن لما بنزل فيديو جديد كل أسبوع وهيك بتقدروا تتابعوا كل المواضيع الصحية اللي بحكي عنها وهلأ صار فينا نبلش I have questions about thalassemia Let's start First question, what is thalassemia? Thalassemia occurs or is discovered shortly after the baby is born, usually between six to 18 months. Why? Because that's when the shift from baby blood to adult blood occurs. So thalassemia is a blood condition that is inherited. We get it from our parents. And when two particular individuals come together to have a child, if those parents are carriers of these genes, it can be passed on to the baby. Now, normally, if we have two genes, one from mother, one from father, and one is normal, we can still function completely normally. Thalassemia may not be a problem. But when both genes from both parents, when one gene from both parents is abnormal for thalassemia, then that becomes much more pronounced in the child. So it's an inherited blood condition and we inherit these genes from our parents. What are the symptoms? The symptoms are basically in two categories, minor and major. In minor, most people will not have any symptoms at all. They will just have an abnormal blood test that leads us to investigate further and we may find that they have thalassemia minor. But then the second category is major. And this is where the symptoms can be quite pronounced. Most of the time, the symptom is anemia. And that leads to someone feeling tired, cold, uh, lack of energy, and they may become pale. When that happens, then we begin to investigate the reasons behind it. Now in thalassemia, this actually begins when the child is relatively young, even before they can speak. So, the, so doctors are, are very attuned to looking for these signs and symptoms even in, in childhood. Three countries across the Middle East, pre-marriage blood testing and counseling is often required. And it is part of this process in which thalassemia is evaluated. So that information is known even for marriage so that when that couple does decide to start a family, that information then informs what kind of testing should be done on the baby after he or she is born. What is the common type of thalassemia in the Middle East? You said there is like a mild thalassemia and severe thalassemia. More common is the mild. And the reason is, is that be through consanguinity or related marriages over decades and decades, there are higher percentage of carriers in this part of the world. In some studies, up to 50% of the population in countries like UAE, Bahrain, and Jordan, these uh, countries have a high percentage of consanguinity, but also carrier rates for thalassemia. 
What is the level of the seriousness of the disease? Well, for someone who has thalassemia major, it is, is quite serious. The uh, individuals who are affected by thalassemia major suffer from difficulty with growth. They suffer from difficulty with ma maturation. In, in, order, in other words, transitioning from a, a childhood to adulthood. Why? They also... Well, basically the thalassemia and all of the complications from the thalassemia and then treatment can lead to um, difficulty with growing normally from childhood to adulthood. That includes bone development, that includes thyroid development, um, that includes fertility. There are many different side effects of either the thalassemia or the treatment that then lead to the delays. So the... Uh, the, the consequence it occurs very early on in childhood, but continues through uh, development and into adulthood. So in this case, what kinds of tests are needed? Well, once we've identified a child as having thalassemia major, then they will continue to follow with a physician for the rest of, of their life. We need to maintain or keep an eye on their hemoglobin, so blood tests to, to determine hemoglobin levels. And then as they require transfusions, there is a risk of something called iron overload. Blood transfusions have lots and lots of iron in them. But if we give someone multiple transfusions over months to years, they can develop iron overload. So mm -hmm. another blood test that we follow is something called ferritin. The third set of blood tests are really about trying to understand how the, the thyroid is working or how other endocrine organs are working to make sure that as the person develops, we keep an eye on the other parts of their body, the hormones, for example, that are needed to help support healthy growth over time. So in general, those are the types of blood tests that we will keep an eye on as we follow a particular person. Interesting. What are the available treatment options? Currently, the most widely used treatment option is repeated blood transfusions. This is needed because once the hemoglobin comes below a threshold of roughly seven, then the person feels lack of energy. They feel cold. They feel that um, they're not able to do the normal things that they're expected to do for their age and their development. On top of that, um, with having a low hemoglobin, that also decreases the normal maturation or growth of an individual. So in order to bring the hemoglobin above seven, traditionally we have been using blood transfusion to bring the hemoglobin above seven. I know that you are involved in research studies in the area of thalassemia treatment. So what are the latest research findings? Some things that have come about in the past two to three years are very exciting. There are two significant developments. The first is a medication called Lupatercept, which has now um, had published studies and approvals for its use in, in the US, for example. Mm -hmm. this, this medication is given as an injection under the skin. And the reason why it is so advantageous is it decreases the amount of transfusions a person with thalassemia requires. Why is that important? Because with transfusions come side effects. And one of the main side effects is iron overload. When that happens, that can affect the heart, the liver, and other organs. So any treatment that actually decreases the number of transfusions we give, and therefore decreases the iron overload, is a beneficial treatment. So Lispatercept is a great example. More recently, in the past couple of months, researchers have been able to show the use of a technology called gene editing or gene therapy that also 
when given to patients, not only with thalassemia, but with also sickle cell disease, has decreased their need for blood transfusion. So these two recent developments are a phenomenal advance for patients that have thalassemia. Wow, that's very promising. Do you think we can reach a point where we can cure thalassemia? So the answer is, is yes. Why? Because in that technology, the CRISPR technology, we take the person's stem cells and mm -hmm. we edit them so that their blood profile after they receive the therapy is like that of a child, a child before they are diagnosed. And when that happens, the need for transfusions markedly decreases. That's a real, real hope that um, will lead to a cure in a way that the, the person does not need as many transfusions and therefore does not suffer from the side effects of iron overload. And is it applied now or not yet? Not yet. It is, it is something that has just been reported to be successful only a couple of months ago. There are still many studies that need to be done, especially long-term observation of the very few that have received this type of therapy. For example, today I cannot say that that treatment cures thalassemia. I cannot say that because we don't have enough information over a long period of time. Mm -hmm. But we have some glimmers, some very bright glimmers of hope for many patients who receive repeated blood transfusions. Let's hope so. And I'm glad that you are revealing this information through my channel, because as you said, the, the, the findings were just a few months ago. So thank you. Absolutely. What kind of diet and lifestyle changes are recommended for thalassemia patients? In general, we don't make any specific recommendations about changing diet. So in other words, a low iron diet is not necessary. And mm -hmm. the studies looking into this have not shown a benefit to a low iron diet. In terms of lifestyle modifications, we don't recommend any particular lifestyle modification. The only thing that we really want to make sure of is that the thalassemia is managed as best as possible, which means that if you would like to take a vacation somewhere and you're going to be away for one, three weeks, that you work with your doctor to determine when, they, when that person should get their blood, but also how to manage the iron overload at, while they are away just to make sure that the anemia is managed as well as the iron overload is managed prior to going on vacation, for example. But in general, we don't make any restrictions on what a person can or cannot do. We tell them, do what you feel like doing. And if there's something that you feel needs to be discussed with your doctor, talk to your doctor and make sure that everything is managed appropriately. Perfect. Dr. Siddiqui, it was uh, great uh, talking to you and uh, thank you for being with me today. Yes, it's been my pleasure. Thank you for allowing me to help share some of the great things that are coming for our thalassemia patients. And uh, inshallah, they will have a benefit from these therapies as they come, come to the clinic.